we came down uh, right at the contact between uh, young lava flow and they see the darker pillow lavas in the background and these older lavas in the front and uh, we started here because we know that lava flow in the background uh, appeared on West Mata between 2010 and 2011 uh, so now we're moved up slope a little bit and uh, here's some pillow lavas flowing down a steeper slope and so one of the things we want to do is uh, sample these recent lava flows so here's uh, Sebastian's manipulator arm grabbing a piece of lava crust uh, from this young flow and uh, we're interested in the chemistry of these lavas and maybe how they're changing with time because we've got uh, many uh, recent eruption sites that we're going to visit on this expedition so we want to see are they all the same are they all different does it change from the summit to the deep flanks uh, all those kind of questions and the chemistry of the lavas here is very unusual so uh, so here's when we pick up these rocks we put them in these milk crates and they're divided so we can keep them separate keep track of what sample came from where uh, further up slope there was a lot of uh, ash deposited on the lava flows so here we're attempting to collect a sample of that ash but uh, you'll see in a minute uh, that a lot of it came out of this push core so we on today's dive we've got a little different approach to to trying to collect this but we think these ash these sediments are ash that was erupted at the same time the lava flows came out so that's why we're interested in collecting some of this ash to see what it looks like um, in this case you'll see a lot Here's of where that it goes all wrong yeah a lot of it has fallen out of the push core but it kind of fell into that quiver so we were able to collect some of it the dive started on the southwest uh, kind of shoulder of the summit and now we're working our way up towards the summit uh, those orange patches are probably microbial mats so there's probably a little bit of warm water diffusing through these sediments and the microbes are taking advantage of it now we've got a gas tight um, sampler so this is a specially designed sampler that uh, collects vent fluid from uh, seafloor hot springs and but keeps it under pressure um, and that way we can uh, extract the gases that are dissolved in the vent fluid and this is a different kind of sampler that's just designed for collecting the vent fluids and it doesn't doesn't hold it under pressure uh, so we're now we're at the rim of this big collapse pit uh, that's at the summit the pit falls off to the right and the, on the left is the outer flank of the summit and uh, next we'll be down inside here we're at near the bottom of that pit you can see all the shimmering water and that's really showing you kind of where this warmer hydrothermal fluid is coming out and that's where these shrimp really want to be because they feed on the bacteria the chemosynthetic bacteria that are making food from the chemicals in the water uh, that's a tenophore they're an important component of the pelagic system kind of the water column they're a voracious predator they eat a lot of uh, smaller organisms as well and they're like jellies but they don't have stinging tentacles um, and so they're in a different group of organisms and what really defines them are these rows of teams or combs basically that go around and they're iridescent and so they can make really pretty colors and you saw so this is a type of jelly uh, this one is actually pretty neat because all of its tentacles are out and you can kind of see that central bell in the middle and it's just floating in the water and probably going to try to catch particles to eat. Um, pretty soon, yeah, you can see it's starting to move. You can see that bell shape in the middle a little more distinct. And uh, once it starts swimming, you can see how it's going to pull in all those tentacles and start swimming by. There it goes. And you can see two distinct kinds of shrimp here. You can see that smaller white opepele shrimp. And then the larger reddish ones are um, an albinocaris kind of shrimp. Now we're on the east side of the summit and this is another uh, recent eruption site a different one this one showed up between 2012 and 2016 there was a lobe of lava formed a crust and then the lava drained out beneath so that all that orange drippy texture is the underside of the crust where lava was dripping yeah you can see this 
a large clump of, of uh, Opipele shrimp. They really seem to like this area. They're probably grazing on the chemosynthetic bacteria that are growing in this area as well. Uh, you can see some of those larger uh, scale worms or polynoid worms. They have scales on their back. It's interesting that they look really big uh, on the video, but when we actually pull them up um, in the lab, they're actually really quite small. Uh, a little bit later, we were near where we think part of the eruption was happening. So there's all these orange coated rocks that uh, look like they came out right near the vent. A little further away, we see lots of this ash, stained ash deposits on the lava pillows that were erupted. So um, we're anxious to get some better samples of this, these ash deposits to take a better look at them and try and figure out uh, their origin.